Here's the stomach, higher in the body than many people think. It's a large sac with strong muscles in its walls. It has a distinctive part to play in the digestive process. Its first function is a physical one. It holds food for two to four hours while the muscles churn it up and break it down. The movement that you see here is continuous. The stomach is contracting the whole time. If you actually put a scope into the stomach, you can see these waves of contraction sweeping down, churning it up, generally forcing it f onwards towards the upper part of the small bowel, which is called the duodenum. When we examine the lining of the stomach wall, here we're looking back past the endoscope to the stomach entrance, we find that it produces gastric juices. These contain an enzyme called pepsin, and the acid which that enzyme needs to start the breakdown of protein. The acid in the stomach activates pepsinogen, which is an enzyme, into pepsin, which starts protein digestion. And also the acid's got a very important defense mechanism because there are germs all around the nose and the throat and uh, germs on a lot of the things we eat and have contact with. The acid in the stomach is acid enough to kill the germs. And it does actually kill them because there are really no germs in the middle part of the bowel. The mixture of food and gastric juices, which is called chyme, must be moved to the intestines for the next stage of digestion. This is done via a ring of muscles, the pyloric sphincter, which squirts about 12 grams at a time into the upper part of the small intestine, the duodenum. The x-ray clearly shows the folds and ridges on the inside wall of the intestine. And these play an important part in the next stage of the digestive process. Movement of the stomach is involuntary. It's triggered partly by the presence of food, but also by signals from the nervous system. The sight, the smell, or even the thought of food is enough to excite us.